Oh, there's fish. Here we go. So a lot of times when I do this, I'll do this little short jigs when I get close. Oh, he nibbled it. Here he is, got him. <laughs> That's my favorite tactic, is sort of aggressive jigging followed... Oh, he popped off. Followed by uh, light jigging. So today I'm going to go over some of the, my tactics for catching rainbow trout under the ice in terms of what kind of actions do I use. And we're going to look on the video and see how these fish respond. So with that last one, um, I saw him on the sonar and I'm doing my sort of typical, what I call my calling jig, which is a fairly aggressive up and down motion where I'm putting, you know, six to 10 inches on the rod tip. And then, uh, when they get close, I reduce that action and start doing this sort of sh little jiggles to emphasize the action on that plastics, but let them zero in on their target. And that worked really well for that fish. But we'll try a couple different tactics today. We'll try some fish where we're just gonna be aggressive with the jig the whole time. Um, we'll do some where I'm just gonna jiggle it lightly. And we'll even do some dead stick and see how they respond to that, especially um, looking at how they respond to dead stick with jigs versus say maybe um, some of my more favorite still fishing baits like flies and such where um, they have more time to investigate it but that was oh, there's a little fish so i'm going to keep this one jigging aggressive this is a little guy and that's a pretty typical behavior there they get kind of spooked by the aggressive jigging and that's why i tend not to uh, favor that aggressive jigging um, more often than not, these fish will spook with that aggressive jigging. So it's good for drawing fish in from a long way. Here's another fish coming in. And it never even got close. It didn't even get on camera. Um, it just, they get turned off by that uh, aggressive jigging. So a lot of times when I see a fish on the sonar or camera, I'm going to transition away from this aggressive jigging. But we've already blown two fish using this aggressive jigging. Now you'll find those individuals though that, that are really aggressive towards that aggressive jigging. So I'm gonna try going back to what I normally do, which is jigging aggressively until I mark a fish and then slowing down my action. Let's see what happens. There you go. There we go, we got that guy. See, he went to that jiggle. All right. <laughs> Pretty little rainbow. Little guy. Oh well. Get you going here, just a sec. Come on, there you go. I saw him come in, I switched to a less aggressive jig and that seemed to work. It might depend on the day and just how the fish are behaving, but I, overall I do find that that aggressive jig to bring them in from afar and then slowing it down so they can zero on their target results in more fish hooked up, um, less fish spooked. Oh, here's fish. Do a little light jiggling. Come on, buddy. There we go, just got him. <laughs> that little bit of jiggle right at the end put him over the limit. Oh, that's a nice fish. Woo. Andy rainbow. Beautiful rainbow. Nice. Looks healthy. All right, next we're going to do uh, just a static rig and see how that goes. We'll start with the jig here, but then we're going to switch up pretty quickly here to my favorite static bait. I'm on a, I'm on a selective gear rules like, so I can't run bait, um, which makes uh, your action that you impart even more important. Okay, so we're just gonna hang this one down there while I get my another rod rigged up with my favorite static rig. Okay. Now the challenging bit with a static rig is that it's not creating action in the water. It's not sending out a signal that these fish can use to detect using their lateral line. So it works best in clear water conditions. Um, trout are very visual feeders, but when the water gets murky, they're gonna rely on that lateral line. And that's why, you know, when you're jigging aggressively with small spoons or jigs and they're creating vibrations in the water, that really helps those fish key in on it. 
But we've got pretty good visibility, so I'm going to just leave that jig hanging there for a while. Um, but I'm going to get a blob fly tied on here, which is my favorite fly for targeting trout on these selective gear rules lakes. Um, and it does very well on other lakes when I fish it static. So we'll see how it does here. I feel like watching a dead stick is probably one of the most boring things in the world, which is why I tend to prefer jigging. <laughs> but we're going to give uh, this jig another uh, few minutes. It's been seven minutes. I haven't marked any fish. Whereas with, when I was jigging, I was bringing in fish every few minutes at least. And I, at least attracting some attention, not necessarily converting all those fish, but since I've stopped jigging and that jig's just been sitting there, I haven't seen anything, which is a big reason why you want to have an active rod, especially when fishing for trout. All right, so we had one fish just swim by, but never even glanced an eye at it, but it was 15 minutes soak there. Nothing. Whereas before I was at least getting more action. So let's try the blob fly, which is mysteriously one of my most productive still fishing lures. Even on bait lakes, it'll oftentimes outfish bait. So let's see what we can do here. You can see it's very bright, that's for sure. So let's give it a shot. Really glows under the water there. Oh, there's a fish. He's looking at the camera. He never even looked at the uh, <laughs> the bait. It's funny. He swam right by that bait. Came in, looked at the camera, swam away. Oh, he's coming back. He's, he's chewing on it. Yeah, got him. <laughs> they love that. Blob fly. That's a nice fish, too. There you go. Oh, he's off. Barbless hooks. Cool. That was great. Came in on the camera and then uh, turned around and went ahead and ate that blob. I don't know what it is about that blob fly. It, uh, they just can't resist putting it in their mouth. It's such a strange phenomenon. They love it. It's, it's it's as effective as worms, I swear. I should do a worms versus blob fly video. This is why I think if you can run two rods where you have one dead stick rod like this, like a blob a few feet away, and then you jig, I think that's the best combination because it brings fish in. Some of those fish might be turned off by jigging, um, but it's enough to draw them in and then they see that blob fly sitting there and they go for it. All right, so it's been 15 minutes and I haven't marked anything. Um, just had no fish come through, which is probably the longest period of time I've had without marking a fish. And really the slowest period was when I was just running dead sticks. Now to finish out my day, I'm gonna switch up to a little spoon, with a single hook on it, single point hook. And we're going to jig this really aggressively and see if that makes a difference in terms of bringing fish in. This is a little cast master with a single hook put on it and then some plastic put on there to uh, add some even more action when I'm just doing the light jiggle. So we'll see if this brings in more fish. Man, if I can get any fish to convert on it. Oh, there's fish. Well, I had one fish come in, look at it. The thing about jigging is it definitely covers more of the water column more effectively. You can work the lure up and down through the water column, whereas, you know, dead sticking and the whole concept is just kind of set it and forget it. You can move it through the depths different times, but, uh, Oh, here, there's a fish. Look at him, he's going crazy for that thing. That was cool. Yes, yeah, so we've already doubled up the number of fish, and I've been out here about 10, 
I had the uh, blob fly going for about 15 minutes and I only had one fish swim by. I've already had two fish come in on this and it's been less than 10 minutes. Come on, buddy. These tiny guys are always so sketchy. Miss that bite. There he is, got him. <laughs> oh, I popped off. Barbless looks so tough. All right, well, I think that's going to do it for me today. Didn't catch as many as I'd hoped, but I had plenty of opportunity. But it's tough on these selective gear rolls, like, so you can't use bait and uh, have to use barbless hooks. They it's pretty easy for them to leverage it off, especially when I'm bringing them up through 16 inches of ice because you're pulling straight up and they can turn that hook and it pops off. Anyways, I hope this video helps to illustrate just some of the different tactics that uh, you can use for catching trout underneath the ice and you know shows you that you need to be a little bit adaptive depending on the conditions that you're in. Um, on some days I found that that dead stick will produce a more aggressive thing, but more often than not, aggressive jigging and then using that along with the fish finder, when you see those fish come in, reduce that jigging action a little bit, tends to produce the most strikes for me, at least. All right, I'll see you next time out on the ice. Just remember, fish smarter, harder. Bye.